uh, what we're going to do here is we'll start over. I was at products and services. We've logged in to manage the autodesk.com into our browser. Over on the right hand side, you can see where we've got an image here of myself. That's just because it's associated to my user account, it might be initials or so on. We've got some additional buttons over here uh, that we'll go to here in just a little bit. But then we're going to swing back over to the left side of the page. And we notice that we have products and services. Of course, this might be truncated, you know, just expand that out however you need to. But we're going to expand down. Uh, a couple more uh, selections here to our product update. Once we select that, we're going to see that the product updates updates here in the middle portion of our screen. And then it also says <clears throat> we have a select all, none, that allow you to download or ignore when you have these check boxes selected. So if you, we start scrolling, it goes through quite a few. Now notice this one says I have 701 available that are older updates. And recent updates within the last 30 days are, there are five. Well, how do we sort and find for our particular software that we have? So part of that is why we're doing this today. Uh, once we get into that, we can come over to our little cog wheel for our download preferences. Now, I recommend trying to get in here before you even do download for um, add-ins and updates, but also for your software as well. So this is your default download method. Now, you have the install now available, the download now, and then also your browser download. Now, what I prefer is I like using the browser download, and what that will do, it actually saves either the zip file or files, uh, or the actual executable, and I can then direct it either to my server or downloads folder or wherever that might be. Um, what we've seen here uh, using the uh, download now uh, process is sometimes the, some of those files end up missing uh, when you do a download, and you don't realize it until you start trying to um, deploy the software. So we've seen that using the uh, brow uh, browser download is really one of the better methods to download. So you can have that selected, click save, and that then works for all of your updates and then all of your products as well that you're trying to download. So when you're done with that, we have a couple other uh, ways to go in and start sorting this. So you could come up here to this little magnifying glass and when that gets selected, gives you search updates available. So then we can come in here, and maybe we're just going to start selecting um, by software. And if I start typing in Revit, and I haven't even hit enter or anything, it starts truncating all this down. Now notice I have two within the last 30 days for my recent, and then 84. So I'm getting rid of all that extra stuff. I don't have to filter or try to sort through. So then, you know, if you wanted to start sorting this even further, maybe we want to uh, eliminate <coughs> down to one particular version. Yes, you can go in here and put 2017. And so that starts then finding all of those 2017 updates. Now, if you didn't feel like typing that out or using anything of, uh, of that nature for that search bar, you could come up here and do a sort by and then try to search by a certain date or whatever that might be there. So if I click on date, I can do it by type, by status, product, severity, uh, and then you can start uh, changing it uh, based on that. So if I go in and select product here, we'll see that it's taking just a little bit longer than I'd like it to, uh, but then you can see how the headers change over the course of each of these different products. So now it starts breaking out per that particular type product and its version. So that's not a bad way to start uh, filtering that out as well. So another way to filter this is to use this little funnel filter tool here that we see. And you can actually um, use a clear all if you had anything previously typed in. But what this will allow you to do is filter it by date. We've got older updates, recent updates, last 30 days. That's kind of what we've seen before uh, when it was uh, sorted by date. Um, by type, you can come in and pick as an extension, a hotfix, 
uh, service pack or anything of that nature. And you also notice that you do have a more button down here so you can actually um, pick more or less and expand those out if need be. I will um, scroll down here a little bit more and we see that we have statuses. Are they live? Have they been revoked? Uh, we've got uh, by product as well. You got your little more um, expansion there. Version and severity and also by language. So if you need it by a particular, a particular language package, you can come in here and actually do that as well. So if I wanted to by English package, by high, um, and then by 2019 version, I can really start filtering and sorting that out. But also notice it's doing this sorting by product as well. So if I go change any of this up here, it's also going to start changing how that layout is within that particular area there. Okay, so now if I was tired of seeing how that starts applying and, and sorting all this, you can sure uh, come in here and select your clear all. And then once that's done, you know, just come back over here, click your X, and we can get out of that. And then it's by product or date or whatever that you have uh, selected there. So that is how we can go through and start sorting those particular items. So I'm just going to back up here to the search uh, part here, and I'm just going to select Revit there. And we notice that we have available, we have extension updates uh, for the structural precast. We also have update for the program itself. So this is really where it's actually telling you what this is available for. So this one right here that I'm looking at and that you see that circle showing up there. This is actually for the 2019 uh, software for Revit itself. And you can see right here in the middle, it's got a severity of high. And then if it has any release uh, documentation about the product. And you can see that also for that update extension as well. So if we click on one of these, it's going to give you more information about it. So it's going to give you uh, what the product is, is the type of uh, status, the version, um, anything that may be affecting uh, the type, and then also the size of the download that it is as well. So I, I like how they add a description of the release notes that's into it now, and this uh, just gives you a little bit more information about what it may fix um, as well, because if you find yourself running into issues, it's possible, more than likely, that you are needing this update um, and will help resolve anything within your uh, software issues that you're having. So we see that there are quite a few others, you know, like this one is a Revit InfraWorks updater. So that's between the uh, two software with that particular add-in that we see at a shared reference point. This works in between Civil 3D and uh, Revit, uh, getting that shared reference point. And we see that here's one down here that shows the BIM 360 add-in uh, as well. So for those of you who might be working in the BIM 360 environment in your cloud collaboration, uh, this would be a real good uh, update to, and add-in to have for your program there. So uh, part of that is also knowing what other options you have available. Um, when you select those particular items, um, now, you'll see up here at the top underneath product updates, you do have the option to select download or ignore. So you have option to do a select all or select none as well. So if I selected none, it gets rid of any previous selections that we do have. And then if I selected multiple, I can come in here and do a select all, which would that would grab all of those updates. That may take a bit. Um, and then we could ignore as well to see how they stay selected and then grayed out. That means I can just come back to those later and then reselect those uh, to be uh, downloaded. Now, since we did change our settings for our download preference, those will then download via the browser. And if you ever needed to change any of that just on the fly, let's say we have this precast extension that we're going to download you can actually come over here to the right side of the screen and select download. And then this will automatically then go to that particular download location 
Um, usually it's downloads on your C drive unless you have it specified for another location there. Uh, or you can go to this more actions and you can uh, ignore uh, how that download is as well. So if you haven't specified where how that is being saved here in your uh, settings, it should give you um, the option for those different downloads as well here under this download uh, button that we see. So along with that, let's say we go in and select this security hotfix here. We see that we have more actions to ignore or to download, and that will also go to that same location. See how we've got this file downloading, check your download folder afterwards. Now, let's say that we've got our items we've already selected and downloaded. You're going to notice that some of these file extensions are different. So notice here we have an MSI file, an MSP file, and a .exe file. So these are all the executables that will either give you updates or add-in extensions uh, for those particular items. Now this one right here, this is an add-in for Revit that we, uh, that we see here. And then also we see this one as a recap update and so on and so forth. And you can see how those came across. And of course, they'll give you those uh, sizes, the date came through and the uh, date was modified through Autodesk as well. So, you know, if you ever have any uh, additional uh, questions about what else can we do through our Autodesk account besides just download products and updates, well, you can also add users and control user management if you are uh, either the admin or contract manager. Uh, you can look at your billing orders, contracts, reporting based on cloud service usage. So if you're using your cloud credits for rendering your online um, uh, sources uh, for your product, uh, you can see that uh, here as well under the cloud service by user or just usage overall. But notice down here at the very bottom, we've got this quick links little uh, section here. If we click on that expansion arrow, we will see that that quick links will allow you to create a new network license file, uh, go to the, uh, get a network license manager, and also view your cloud credits. You can also see what's new about the account as well. So notice here, if we go back up to our uh, product services, or user management knows how that quick links changes. So just be prepared if you're on the wrong selection up here on this left hand side, your quick links can change there. So if I go back to my product updates, notice how that quick links then changes back to the allow me to go in and grab and create my own network license file. All right, so I'm going to come back over to the top right hand uh, side of our screen here uh, while we're still logged into our Autodesk account. And this little button right here is an alerts notification. And what this will do, it gives you just information about your plan, what products are included in that particular um, uh, plan as well. And then you can also manage your renewals from here. So you've got quite a bit of information at your fingertips here. It's just where has that all been changed or, or located to find that stuff. And then also you have your help menu as well from here. So along with that, you know, you have the capabilities to go to your home. Uh, that will allow you to see everything within your account. You can come back here, go back to your account where the products are. Uh, we see that we've got the products. Uh, listed here since my little spinning wheel agrees to show us everything here and then we'll be able to uh, go back and then view our product updates. All right, it looks like we're about done for the day so I'm going to let you guys go and hope you guys uh, uh, found something useful out of this particular webinar. So I will let you guys go and you all have a great day. Thanks for your time.